Can you feel it? The beckoning call of the wild. The kindling in your spirit when you hear the untamed howls of the wilderness. The immolation in your blood as the thrill of the hunt pours over you. Smoldering remains of your enemies lay in waste behind as you conquer and bond with beasts of unwavering loyalty and ferocity. And only whispers dare call your name as all fear the swift death that falls from your aim. For you are the hunter. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the Cloak and Quiver podcast. My name is Solar Flare, and thank you for tuning in this week. Again, I'm going to start off this episode with a tremendous thank you to everyone who downloaded and listened to the show last week. And not only that, but those of you that provided such positive feedback and reinforcement through Twitter and YouTube and emails. I just want to say thank you so much for taking that time. Uh, you know, to, to encourage, you know, because when you, when you make a project like this, sometimes you don't really know, uh, you're a little apprehensive, kind of nervous. This is, this is new for me, at least, doing something like this. Um, not necessarily podcasting, but presenting you guys with a very specific topic and doing it also by myself, at least for the time being. Um, so I just want to say thank you. I really do appreciate that so much. And I just wanted to let you guys know that that meant a lot. So thank you, and let's get into some hunter talk, shall we? So let's talk a little bit about what I did as a hunter this week, and then we can get into some of the highly anticipated and very heavy uh, Warlords of Draenor uh, alpha patch notes. Uh, but this week in Siege of Orgrimmar, I had two very nice rankings. Uh, I got 11th on Malkarok and 25th on Iron Juggernaut, so that was really nice to see uh, getting back into the swing of things, at least for this month, uh, from me. Um, and then also I've been working on Proving Grounds again, um, getting stuck in the 50s, uh, or sorry, late, late 40s, so like, like wave 47, um, kind of ironing that strategy out. Definitely a few things I still need to refine and learn to push past the, you know, even to even further ranks, but I'm having a lot of fun in Proving Grounds, uh, you know, just kind of wasting time, you know, between uh, raid lockouts. And, and let me tell you, when you start to get into some of the higher waves of Proving Grounds, man, is that arduous, because each wave lasts a minute, and if you're in there for like 50 waves or even higher, that's 50 minutes of just non-stop DPS, and man, my thumbs kill me after I finish, a, you know, like a session of Proving Grounds, so I, I, I take them slow, but they're a lot of fun, so, so that's been my week. And I actually just got back from a L.A. meetup for my guild, so I came back into town late Sunday evening, so that's why the show was a little bit delayed. I do apologize for that, but I had a nice meetup with my guild uh, in Los Angeles, and here I am back in uh, very sunny Phoenix, Arizona, uh, already pushing 80 degree temperatures. But uh, So that's been my week, and then uh, let's get into some of the news. Warlords of Draenor Alpha Patch Notes for the Hunter class. Here we go. And let me start off by saying how happy I think most of you guys are going to be as we discuss these patch notes because I think truly the Hunter is moving into a fantastic direction. They're fixing a lot of the problems that we've had uh, with our specs uh, and, and in the process of doing so, making each specialization feel more unique, uh, which is something that they said they were going to do. And I think they really delivered on um, you know, last week we were a little apprehensive about losing some of our CC as well as some of the ability changes we saw in the talent tree and some abilities we were losing. But, I mean, I think overall as a damage-dealing class, you know, we're not a hybrid spec. We're pure damage dealers. Uh, the way that they've, you know, redesigned the specs and fixed a lot of the spec problems, I mean, I, it's just great. It really is. Uh, these, I think, are so promising and that when we launch, you know, on 6.0, that the Hunter community is going to be happy with the way that their class turned out in this, you know, in the great churning wave that is, you know, beta and alpha for a new expansion. And I'm happy for that. I, I am. This is probably one of the, what I think is going to be one of the greatest times to play a Hunter, even though, you know, it may not be like OP, BM back in BC or, you know, like survival at the start of Cataclysm. Uh, but the way our class operates and our and our functions and our roles are so much more enticing and exciting. So let's talk about some of the broader changes that affect the class as a whole, and then we'll get into the more specific changes that affect you know certain specs or glyphs or even with our aspects. There's changes to our aspects, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but overall, um, hunters had a large number of cooldown abilities cut, and they've done this. Um, which, believe it or not, we said last episode that we thought Stampede went to the talent tree to remove Button Bloat, and it did. Uh, they removed a lot of the abilities, uh, cooldown abilities primarily, into the talent tree, or even just removed them completely. Like, Rapid Fire is just gone now. 
which is weird to think, but um, it, it is cutting down on the button bloat, like they've said. So I, I mean, when it, it, developers aren't stupid either. So when I say we've lost rapid fire, uh, it's not like oh my god, hunters don't have cooldowns no more. We suck. That's not true. They're gonna they're gonna compensate that damage loss into our abilities. So it's it's not the end of the world. Now you could say. Oh, we've lost a cooldown in the process, which we did, but we don't have an on-demand button that says, I want to do more DPS right here. That is gone, yes, um, but I think the changes coming up are going to be able to compensate for that lack of uh, on-demand damage, and we'll get into that in just a second, because I, I do have a good point to make for that. So, like, for example, I imagine if there's ever a fight like General Nazgrim, where there are phases where he takes an increased amount of damage, you would spec into Stampede for that. Like, I don't think for every fight you're going to have to have an, a, a button that says, when I click this, I'm going to do more damage for a short period of time, and then I can do that again two, three, four minutes later. Uh, if there's a fight like that, that talent becomes much more appealing, or the fact that you have a cooldown becomes much more appealing. But when you have passive talents like that, not only does it uh, you know compensate for the button bloat, but those passive talents, I, I think that they're, what they're trying, their goal here... Is, is to make those still competitive. So yes, you may have lost a cooldown, but the passive bonus you're getting from, say, Blink Strikes or or whatever the case may be is still going to act as a, you know, completely viable and not laughed at uh, cough, cough, Link's Rush, uh, you know, choice to make. So it will be interesting to see, kind of, as we get closer to the number crunching and in the actual, like, this does more damage than this phase of the beta, um, if by losing cooldowns we lose uh, utility and damage as well and if these passive talents remain the way that they are if they're still you know totally okay to have and for some fights where you want to cool down that option now becomes uh, you know is available to you and becomes more appealing uh, so kind of cool stuff I think neat, neat discussion uh, another big change are aspects and I know we said that we're going to get really excited about all these new changes that were coming up but this is probably the one that gave me the most bad taste in my mouth if that's what you wanted to call it um so Aspect of the Hawk and Aspect of the Iron Hawk have been removed, and it's just now a passive 10% uh, damage reduction plus the bonus attack power that they had already gave. Um, now Aspects aren't stances anymore, they're just abilities you can toggle on and off. And so now that remains is just Cheetah and Pack. So, you know, seldom used, truly, and annoying, to say the least, to get that daze or... No, you're in LFR and you're like, okay, who has pack? And you have to go through like the seven hunters in the group to find out who has pack on. Uh, and then they added a glyph, uh, glyph of aspect of the beast. And aspect of the beast um, allows you to become untrackable. So I mean, like a really underwhelming aspect changes in my opinion. Um, I was kind of hoping for more. Uh, the fact that they left them in, but at it, 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 this watered down of a state is kind of. Um, disappointing honestly to have three aspects and both of them are just like seldom used ever truly um so there's that and i'm not saying like bring it back or anything like that but you guys remember aspect of the wild the one that gave nature resistance to your raid i really liked that because there was a fight where on on hagara that we had more than one hunter and i would use aspect of the wild during her lightning phase as if you know lightning is nature damage and that was a pretty strong and, like, fun ability to use on that fight, to have that nature resist damage during the lightning phase, and it was valuable, and, and I liked it. It, it. it was an ability that didn't get used much that got to be used for that encounter. Um, and I was kind of hoping to see aspects a bit more like that, not, like, untrackable or increases movement speed until struck. Um, kind of poo-poo in my, in my eyes, but um, there's a lot more exciting stuff to talk about. So that's our aspect changes. Uh, kind of eh, but and then also in hey that's really cool news um, the, one of the perks for marksman and beast mastery uh, allow us to use our kill shot at 35% instead of 20% so talk about getting that execute damage 15% earlier uh, definite rise uh, in DPS because of that kind of fun but it, it, we'll talk about what that means for survival when we talk about our survival changes here in a minute so let's actually transition a bit more into the class or excuse me the spec specific changes now and I'm sure hunters everywhere are going to rejoice knowing that dismiss pet now ignores line of sight hallelujah this was one of our big pet problems getting fixed it doesn't fix everything with pet pathing issues but 
like finding your pet and trying to dismiss it or call it back out again and having line of sight just totally give you the middle finger this is great so like siege crafter you can't dismiss your pelt uh, your pelt your pet on the belt if it's like next to the pipe or on Megara uh, with blink strikes your pet would get behind Megara but the the water on the lake would like knock targets back and your pet would get knocked back so far that it was like out of line of sight to be dismissed or even on Spoils of Pandaria, I had my pet get stuck in one of the stinking crates um, in the encounter. And at the time, I didn't know that you could put it on passive and it would reset. So I was telling my tank, break my pet out, break my pet out. Because, you know, it's like, what the heck, man? It's like 40% of my damage just down the drain. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad this is fixed. I'm, I'm very happy that this is fixed. And now for the big one. Everybody get ready to throw your hands up in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Knowing that Misdirect is hugely buffed for Warlords. So here's the tooltip. Are you ready for this? You Misdirect threat to the targeted party or raid member, and all threat, or let me repeat that, all threat caused by your attacks for the next hour will be transferred to that target. Can I get a heck yeah? This is like the best change ever. This is so good. Like, it, literally. For a, for an example, any ad in the history of the world will never have to be picked up by your tank now. That is just out the window. And this now becomes so beneficial to your raid, whereas your tank would have to get off the boss early. So now your tank is not doing any damage to the primary kill target. You Your tank has to run over there and pick it up. So now your tank has engaged a target that is like 15, 20 yards away perhaps, and is now taking damage where you could misdirect the target, and this is any time. The misdirect does kind of act like this on a 30-second cooldown. I, I get that. But, I mean, to have this happen at any time, and, and, and there's no, and you're not generating any threat, I mean, this is just, it's OP. And not in a, necessarily a bad way, but it's just very overpowered, and it's a great utility for us to have 24-7 now instead of every 30 seconds on another target, which I'm all for. And now let's get into some of the more, uh, you know, spec-specific changes, and I think the one spec that we're going to start out with that people really wanted to see the most out, you know, from uh, was Marksman. And, I mean, even since early Cataclysm, people have been saying, you know, Marksman, this, doesn't, this feels clunky, this doesn't feel right, you know, it, it really, Marksman really has struggled since early Cataclysm. I mean, there's been a, some, there's been some instances where I was like, okay, but um, th this is really, it's shining a moment, I think, uh, so far in its Warcraft. Uh, career and some and, and they really just fixed a lot of the big problems that plagued that spec that you know that that marksman faced as a spec to not be able to deal AOE damage to to have certain things about the spec just not work well and and, and just to see them rectified is um, amazing to see after so long and let's get right into it so one of the ones that I saw initially off the bat that made me so happy I mean smile from ear to ear uh, was aim shot now deals twenty percent more damage so hooray. Uh, and it no longer interrupts auto attacks. Now, this is just so huge. I mean, really, this is fantastic. And what's really interesting about such a small change, you think, oh, okay, well, you just auto attack during one cast. What do you do? No, no, no. This spawned, I mean, years of debate in this spec about whether, you know, if your aim shot wasn't at a certain cast time, if, like, losing those auto shots uh, made arcane shot a more appropriate focus dump to use instead of aimed. So, so, so to see this and have uh, Arcane Shot be removed from Marksman, I mean, we, we're talking about a so much more defined and straightforward spec here as well as it just plays better. You, you have one designated focus dump. Well, excuse me, two with Chimera, but Chimera was a given. It was always a toss-up between Aimed and Arcane. Um, and now that that's really been defined, and I mean, fantastic, fantastic news for Marksman already, and we're not even done yet. Uh, and as we all know, Marksman's biggest pitfall is its ability to AoE. Uh, it certainly does not provide suitable AoE for, you know, as compared to the other two specs. And with this new perk system in place, uh, gaining a perk for your spec every time you level up, one of the perks is Enhanced Piercing Shots, I believe was the exact name. And every time you strike a critical with your multi-shot, you put your Piercing Shots bleed, as you know, from steady and aimed criticals onto the target. So your multi-shot crits are going to put a bleed on the target. Uh, and now you have something very comparable to Serpent Spread. And this coupled with uh, Bombardment, you know, being able to deal 60% more damage with your uh, multi-shot, and then add that into, and then factor in, you know, that those critical strikes from those big hits are gonna generate bleeds now. I think Marksman actually might have a fighting chance in AoE. So, I mean, we're, we're talking, 
tremendous changes, things that were long overdue. We're talking years overdue. Uh, coming into play and I mean it's just exciting it's it's a new fresh face to marksman and I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy it all right let's talk about survival survival getting some very big changes as well um, the biggest one definitely hands down is black arrow is being changed a little bit uh, so black arrow uh, works the way it's, it does now but it has a chance every time it deals damage to cause the next two explosive shots to cost no focus and not trigger a cooldown okay so go figure kind of the way it is now uh, but then the tooltip goes on to say this effect is guaranteed to activate at least once. So then you go, oh dang. So here, here is my problem with this, is this means that you can have runs where Black Arrow is proccing your explosive shot every time it deals damage. Or you can have runs where it only procs once. And now this throws a whole new element of RNG into this equation that I'm not a fan of. I don't like runs where one time I deal, you know, 100,000 damage from my explosive shots, and the next run I deal 400,000 damage from my explosive shots because I got way more procs. I don't like that. That bothers me. I don't like RPPM trinkets. I don't like uh, this new change. I don't like uncertainty. Call me crazy. I mean, people... And let me get this straight. People sometimes like this because it says it adds variables. It, it certainly does. You do not know what's going to happen, and some people do enjoy playing like that, but... I don't. I, I want to know how much damage I'm going to be able to deal. Uh, and and toss-ups, uh, I usually lose. Uh, I am not a gambler for this reason. So, And I'm kind of curious to find out if they like may put a cap on the number of explosive shots that can be procced, you know, to kind of prevent like a drastic swing of procs. You know, like one black arrow gave you one explosive shot, uh, or one set of explosive shots, and the next black arrow gave you four sets of explosive shots. You know, maybe they might cap that down, or, or I don't know what they're going to do, but I think this is kind of scary. And uh, my question to you would now be, it, does your you know opinion or perspective of survival uh, change because of this? Are you going to try a different spec now? Are you, are you maybe more interested in BM or maybe more interested in Marksman? Because this is, I mean, I get it. Fire mages operate a lot like like this, at least in the fact that their, their rotation and their damage is definitely determined by luck. Um, and I don't like that. I am not a fan of this. So, yeah, there's that. Um, but something kind of awesome, I think, that really, again, helps define survival as being this is a survival hunter. Um, camouflage as a baseline for all hunters restores 5% of your maximum health every one second while camouflage is active. Now, survival has a perk called improved camouflage that says camouflage no longer breaks from dealing or taking damage. Say what? This is OP. There is nothing to say else other than this is incredibly OP. We're talking 300% of your life back here. Every one second, you get healed for 5% of your life. And if that if camo is active for 60 seconds, I mean, do the math. That's that's the, that's an intense defensive cooldown, if I've ever seen one. That's a lot of healing onto you. Uh, and I like it. I, I will not say no to that. So give me more of that action, Blizzard, because I will take it. And don't forget, I mean, that was the, the extension of the uh, camouflage being active was for survival, but now camouflage becomes a defensive cooldown for every other spec. You still heal for 5% uh, every second while it's up, and if it's other specs, if you're, if you're BM or marksman, it'll still be up for 6 seconds in combat. Um, so, I mean, that's a 30% heal, so it, it, it's a nice defensive cooldown. So when Warlords pops and you, and you don't want to play survival, maybe you're marksman or BM, don't forget it, because it's still valuable as well as not the boss or whatever situation you may find yourself in you are not targetable by ranged attacks bosses can't put debuffs on you things can't go flying from the sky and, and land on you because you were targeted uh we're talking some intense survivability going on here with this improved camouflage and i like it i am a fan of this uh so so they're kind of pulling me back into survival now so it's it's kind of i, I like this change a lot i think it's well deserved and and it really adds a bit of that kind of um you know, truly survival back into survival hunter so it's it's really neat i do like this quite a bit another interesting change for survival is serpent spread has been renamed to serpent sting um and it still is a passive so it's going to proc on multi shots and arcane shots and that's going to apply our serpent sting we don't actually get to manually you know press the button that says i want to apply serpent sting it actually is a passive through our multi shots and our arcane shots, so it's kind of nice, you know, keeping that uh, ability uh, there. I kind of like it for arcane shot. It's it's kind of a nice addition, uh, you know, to add it with multi shot because when you know sometimes you'll have those heavy streaks of lock and loads where you're prioritizing your explosive shot and you're not uh, able to cast cobras, you know, or you, it's very ill advised to do so during the time. 
And, you know, when, say you get out of that explosive shot, you can just go into Arcane. You don't have to spend time casting Cobra, and I kind of like that. I think that's a, a pretty big change, actually, to help maintain Serpent Sting's uptime, too. I mean, it already should have been pretty darn close to 100% with uh, Cobra, but, I mean, now it should really, like, never fall off with Arcane Shot being added uh, as well to this, so as well as multi-shot. So I'm excited. Very nice change. But one thing that was kind of eyebrow-raising was... Killshot was actually removed from survival. We don't have an execute as survival now. And of course, uh, red flags and up in arms immediately. But just hang on a second because I am positive now that we do not have an execute uh, for this spec that our abilities um, are going to have, you know, they're going to be more front loaded since, you know, we may not deal a ton of damage during the sub 20%, but we're going to be out of the gate hard to compensate for that. Like, our, our just like, we're going to be a strong dot damage class, I would imagine, or else it would make no sense to remove kill shot. So, so while kind of interesting, I still think we'll be okay. I don't think this is going to change much uh, other than just an ability that we press during the sub 20% of a fight. And let's talk about Beast Mastery a little, I mean, just a little bit. Uh, BM didn't receive many changes. Blizzard said that they were pretty happy with BM, you know, feeling like you were using your pet as your primary source of damage, which is incredibly true of the spec, to, to be honest. I think BM is actually in a really good position uh, with some recent additions like uh, Beast Cleave. And something I definitely wanted to bring up on this week's show that we were kind of confused on last week, or at least it wasn't very clear. It wasn't, it wasn't clear to me. Um... When we were talking about versatility, uh, the talent that replaced with or without you, um, remember when you dismiss your pet, you would gain a 30% damage increase. Well, it turns out this talent actually changes depending on what spec you are. Uh, it's called Lone Wolf if you're marksman of survival, and that does increase all damage done by 30% when your pet isn't active. But then it also becomes something different if your pet is active and you are BM, and it becomes versatility. And, of course, it increases the effectiveness of your pet uh, to do 70% more damage, and it gains all of the pet abilities for each uh, pet spec, so tenacity, ferocity, and cunning. Uh, so definitely something that I want you guys to know from last week, that we do have a bit more clarification on this. And it's nice. It's cool to have a talent that actually is uh, finally, you know, something different for uh, a different spec. That's the first time hunters have seen that, so pretty cool. Uh, but that does it for discussing uh, certain class and spec-specific changes in Warlords. Um, if you, uh, I did mention perks earlier. If you guys are interested in a full list of seeing uh, perks for each of our uh, specs, uh, remember perks are additional benefits we gain every time we level up in a certain spec. Um, they're primarily all like damage increasing, like increases the damage done by your kill command by 20%. I would say 90% of them are damage based, but there are a couple that um, are kind of unique. But if you guys want to check those out, those are on MMO Champion as well as other hunter sites like Eyes of the Beast and, you know, all your other, for all your other hunting needs, you know, don't forget there are other sites and places out there that can easily provide that information for you. Just check those out. I didn't think that they were, um, all that exciting just because most of them were damage based but if you are interested in taking a look they are out there for you uh but let's change gears a little bit and talk about pets more than we kind of did uh last week there's a couple of different interesting things happening with pets this week uh one was new families so we have pets um they're called the water beasts they're like giant hippopotamus um or hippopotami perhaps hippopotos hippopotamus i don't know they're hippos they're huge and they're really cool um, and then there were also dragonflies, which we didn't get to see a preview of, uh, like a 3D model, but they also have a slow fall ability as kind of like their special, and it, and it acts like a major slow fall. It's really neat. And then there's also um, hydras as well. So, so hydras, dragonflies, and river beasts are the three new families being introduced uh, in Warlords, as well as Sporbats got an updated model. They have like this kind of... Um, eye glow to them that projects light like it actually projects light to its surroundings it looks more I mean, they're, they're glowy and they're really glowy this time around so uh, that was cool to see like we talked about last week it's always fun to see new pet families and new artwork and that was always stuff that i look forward to when they when they have uh, content releases like this is the new pets we can go out and tame so and i wasn't disappointed i think a lot of the new models are really cool they're even uh, boars that got updated and their tusks are just gigantic so i might even go out and tame a boar when more lords drops uh, so cool stuff on board for pets and i like it uh, but also, there were, um, you know how we got our CC removed, and, and how like all pets that had CC 
uh, were, were losing it, like monkeys, uh, stun, and, uh, you know, disarms and stuff like that. So a lot of pets just got, like, basic, um, you know, okay, so mastery buff for your raid or whatever. But some pets actually got some really cool abilities. I mean, I, there's a lot to, to, to talk about, but I want to select a few highlights here. And you can, of course, go online and check out the full list, but uh, there's some really neat ones. So, like, Devil Sword has got this thing called Feast, where it uh, eats a, a nearby corpse, and it restores 20% of its health and 20 focus back over 5 seconds, which is kind of cool. I don't know how often you're going to be able to use that uh, to, like, an advantage, but kind of a neat little thing it can do. Um, Corehound's got something very interesting called uh, Molten Hide, and every time the Corehound is struck with damage, it deals uh, fire damage back to the attacker. Um, but it only lasts 10 seconds, and it can only be activated every minute. But, I mean, when was, like, the last time you saw an ability that operated, like, thorns or, like, uh, deals damage on being hit, you know? And then I think Keelan's actually got my favorite uh, ability. Uh, you know, the, the dogs from the uh, Mists of Pandaria. Uh, uh, Keelan. Keelan? Keelan? One of the two. And Stone Armor is their ability, and they reduce all damage taken by 30%, and it causes it to heal for 3% of its health every second for 8 seconds. Talk about a soloing pet. That might give a turtle a run for its money with that shell. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to be really interested to test the Keelan out when this goes live uh, in some solo encounters. So, exciting stuff. And like I said, there's a full list online with some neat changes. And like I said, uh, most of it is, like, pets that originally had, uh, like, a, a disarm, like a scorpion, uh, just getting, like, okay, now it has 5% crit for your raid. Uh, but then there's about a handful that have some neat abilities, and you can take a look at your leisure, and maybe you'll find a new, your favorite pet for Warlords that you're going to go out and tame. So there's always that. But uh, lastly, I think the, the last news topic we're going to talk about are some glyphs. We, we're, we're seeing a few new glyphs into the... Uh, into the fray with this patch, or at least with this uh, data mining session, and a couple of interesting ones, a few things to definitely discuss, and one of my definite favorite glyphs that I will be running for next expansion. Uh, so the first glyph I want to talk about speaks to me, uh, especially soloing, is Glyph of Quick Revival. Uh, your revive pet is now instant, but costs 80 focus, so kind of like a Heart of the Phoenix, which is the instant revive pet ability, but it's just we can use it without a cooldown now, it's just 80 focus. and that's a steep cost, but I think it's worth it, uh, and only in a couple situations, and I think it's primarily in soloing situations, where um, if you, like, say, uh, when I was soloing Stone Guards or whatever, uh, a, where, like, boss, a, the boss hitting you would result in your death very quickly. Uh, so say you're, like, 35 yards out and your pet is tanking and your pet dies. You can immediately hit this, and preemptively, too, because you know when your pet is sinking. You know when there's a time where your med pet is not going to cut. The damage it takes so you know you can build up focus hit this immediately feign death and you're good to go again i actually i think this is actually incredibly strong for soloing uh some encounters where where boss damage is paramount for it to not go on to you uh so i like this quite a bit i think a glyph of quick revival is its name is going to be quite awesome for soloing so and there's also a uh, glyph of deep frost so uh when our targets are affected by our freezing trap then you know that's the one that uh freezes them in place it's not the slow um it is immune to damage for the entire duration of the trap so it acts kind of like banish or cyclone and uh probably fantastic for pvp because you don't have to take the glyph of what's it called scattered shots where if you scatter it does not remove or i'm sorry it does remove all the dots from the target uh, and this kind of acts the same way. So if you if you freezing trap a target, it's not going to break from an accidental cleave, or you know your paladin just does not know how to not divine storm everything, and it won't break. Uh, I can't imagine this being entirely you know, like super super useful in PVE. Maybe there's a few encounters where you want to keep adds locked down and locked down for good, in which case this would be quite strong. But I, I feel this is more PVP oriented, but still worth talking about, uh, just for the fact that we've never seen anything like this before. Um, and then there's my favorite one, which is Glyph of Play Dead. And when you feign death, so does your pet. And, you know, it sounds like cool and everything. Like, oh, you know, there's my fox who feigned death with me. Kind of neat. Uh, this is actually great for wipe recovery. Uh, you know, because when you feign death, your pet is still active. So the boss is running around, you know, killing off your raid members. And it has to go kill your pet or if you dismiss it or whatever. Um... But that takes time, and you could have taken damage in that time. You know, the passive damage the boss is doing, what have you. You can go on and on about that. Uh, but when you feign death and your pet feign deaths, you know, that you're, you're talking about all aggro that you control is completely wiped off the table right now. And you're sitting in that corner completely, uh, you know, uninhibited by the boss. And um, 
That's strong, because then you'll be able to just get that mass res off really quick. So I could see that that's definitely going in my minor glyph slot, just so I can get those wipe recoveries out maybe a bit easier than I could have previously. Uh, so uh, a big thumbs up in my book for that glyph. I kind of like that one quite a bit. So, so I think we'll move a little bit more uh, away from news, and, and we'll get into our mailbag here. We have our first question from Spaz Weston on Twitter, who says, What do you think of the Keelan's Battle Res ability? And are there any other pet abilities that you would like to see in the game? Uh, and I think we talked a lot about pets today and a lot about the new abilities, and I think a lot of those are strong and fun. So I think that that's a pretty good indicator as to what the hunter community uh, wants and would like to see. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about the battle res component, especially in how it uh, is in a raiding environment. I think it's strong. I think there are... This kind of segues into a, a bit more of a broader topic, which is, which is the best raiding pet. And of course, in the deepest, darkest part of our hearts, we all know that the Spore Bat is the best hunter pet. But I think there are three uh, very strong contenders for best pet, as it currently stands. Because I think in Warlords, it's going to be a lot more of, a, of an open-ended question. But I think three pets are very strong, and I think these are the three. And this is, of course, if every one of your raid's buffs are covered. If, if, there, if your raid has everything except for mastery, mastery is going to be the best pet to bring to your raid, hands down. That's, that's totally a given. Um, but if all of your raid buffs are covered, uh, then three come to mind. One is the Tall Strider, one is any spirit beast, and the other one is the Keelan's Battle Res. Uh, let's talk about the Tall Strider a little bit. I feel like this isn't as well known as it should be. But the Tall Strider special ability is this dust cloud it kicks up. And it is the only um, ability or even like pet or action in the game that applies an immediate three stacks of Sunder armor, so 12% uh, armor reduction in a 10 yard radius. And nothing in the game does this. I mean, your, all, your warriors would have to hit, you know, Sunder three times. Your Druvas would have to hit Fairy Fire three times. No, your Sporebat, or excuse me, your Tall Strider goes right in. It hits Dust Cloud, and everything in 10 yards has a three stack of Sunder. And that's something to be, you know, there's something to be said about that. Uh, it's, it's the only thing in the game that does that, and it saves globals for other people, so it's kind of nice, and I, and I do like that quite a bit. Um, and then, of course, there is the Spirit Beast, which have the heal, and I quite like the heal. It has saved me in a number of situations, and it has helped out uh, other raid members in a number of situations, like if our tank calls for an external raid cooldown like pain suppression i know he's going to be hurting here in a minute so i will cast my pet's uh, spirit vent onto our tank when he calls for an external just knowing that those heals will be helpful you know as well as even casting it on yourself if you have some like dot on you from a, a boss or or what have you I, and i like i said i can't even tell you how many times that saved me on in, in raids and stuff like that so i think i think being able to put on demand healing is very powerful as well and then, of course, finally, this brings us to the Keelan pet with the Battle Res. And this is a, this is so strong, especially if you're in a 10-man. I mean, I know it's going to go to 20 in Warlords, but, like, right now in a 10-man, uh, say you only have, like, one Battle Reser in the raid. Like, maybe it's only a Druid. Maybe there's only a Druid in the raid that has B-Res. Uh, and your Druid dies. <laughs> now no one's going to B-Res. But thankfully, you have your Keelan uh, there as backup. So I think if you're in a, maybe a smaller raid composition, that it's going to be a lot more valuable than, say, in a 25-man, where we have, like, seven Battle Reses. Uh, but I think a Keelan definitely has a place in the Hunter stable as being incredibly valuable. Uh, so there is that. Uh, and I think those are the three most valuable Hunter pets, uh, definitely, uh, just in my opinion. So so there is that. So thank you for your question. I'm glad we got to talk about that because I know that is on a lot of folks' minds. I get that question every now and then uh, from you know other people. So I'm glad you asked. And I think that'll do it for at least this week. Of course, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free to tweet the show at uh, Cloak and Quiver or email the show uh, any questions or comments or, you know, whatever, anything that's on your mind. I already had a few people email me this week that just wanted to talk about the show, and I really appreciated that. So if you guys want to talk or, or ha have a question or a comment, you want to hear something on the show, feel free at cloakandquiver at gmail.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the underscore solar flare for just about everything else. That's F-L-A-I-R. And I know it doesn't make much sense being a hunter, but long story. And yeah, okay, so there's that. And then, um, again, thank you all so much for coming out and listening to a second episode of the show. We went a little bit longer this week. This is this is around the length that I want to have most of the shows, and I think this is a really good um, you know, benchmark for the duration and we got to talk about a ton of new Warlords information, and we're probably going to have in the next episode even more Warlords information to talk about or polish up on 
or what have you. Um, so thanks again, everybody, for coming out and listening. My name is Solar, and I will see you guys for next week's episode. Guys for next week's.